Herman rang Steve and I independently on Sunday evening. And he, the, he basically went, um, hello, Steve, or hello, Sophie. Um, we need to get our prototype of the proton built to show the BBC this Friday. And we each went, well, that's completely impossible because clearly it is completely impossible. A machine that has only reached the discussion stage um, at, with general agreement over what it would be. Um, that was a poor prospect for building a prototype of by Friday. And Herman was cunning, devious, stroke of uh, managerial magic. Uh, he told each of us the other one had already agreed. So we were each extremely dubious, saying to him, well, if Steve says it can be done, then I'll give it a try. So we came in on Monday morning and discovered that neither of us had said such a thing. And we, we'd worked together for a while on various things. We knew what Homer was like. I had to firm up a circuit diagram very quickly. That wasn't too difficult because it, conceptually it was very much based on a, a machine I'd built at home the previous year. So I'd hand assembled a, a machine. Um, all we did for the BBC Micro was make it go twice as fast. Um, and, and some of the concepts there were, were things such as a, a single unified memory um, for, for graphics and, and code and data and so on. Um, shared between generating the display and, and uh, processor use. So the memory was, was, was being worked very hard. We had to get the first um, DRAMs, I think they were from Hitachi, the first DRAMs in the country that were fast enough to support this model, um, but they were just becoming available. Um, and then of course we had to assemble a prototype and get it working. Um, in five days. So we really had to get the thoughts out of our head on what the IO process was like and draw a circuit diagram. If we had no circuit diagram, all the discussions were still in our heads. It was at that young a, a stage. So we had, we had agreed several ideas. Yeah. The first one was there were faster 6502s than the one we'd used in the system range in the Atom. So we'd use a faster one and taken wholly from Steve's own home-built computer was the idea that we would share video memory between the processor and the video display system transparently. Um, so that those were concrete ideas that we'd agreed on. And um, so we had to make a certain diagram of the central part of the machine. And, and make it. So it took us a lot more discussion um, during Monday and Tuesday to draw that circuit diagram and draw up a hit list of the parts we needed. So that concept of running the memory for the processor and the video at the same time meant that the memory had to be much faster than anything that existed. Um, and we'd read about it in data books. We knew it could be done during the initial discussions on the proton. We'd already found that Hitachi had some 4K by 16 DRAM chips that would go that fast. So we got Herman to ring up the rep and discover that there weren't any in the country and he would hand carry some prototypes in from his next visit on the continent to get, get them to us. I think it would, he'd get them to us on Thursday. So they really moved to get the prototypes chips to us. Um, the Cinetech representative gave us a two megahertz 6502. 
Um, because we had, yeah, we bought lots of 6502s for our other machines, but we never bought a two megahertz one. So we, we got one of those. And most of the rest of the chips, the prototype was scraped together from what we already had. It was a, a close call because on Friday morning, and they were going to come on Friday at uh, 10 o'clock, we'd been working through all the nights. Uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning, the, the computer didn't work. Um, and then, uh, you know, <laughs> I suggested that it was the, the clock link between the, the development system and uh, the, the, the prototype that produced the clock skew uh, that uh, stopped the prototype from working. So I asked them to actually blow the uh, software into ROM, put the ROM into the um, prototyping system, cut the umbilical cord, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, it, <laughs> it sprang into life and worked. So it was was quite a surprise. All the, of course they did all the hard work. I just <laughs> produced the final. Uh, idea that, that then made, made it spring to life. We were very disappointed because, uh, you know, we'd been working for three days and two nights. And uh, there we were at eight o'clock in the morning and it, it just didn't work. So we were very, um, very disappointed uh, and the mood was terrible. <laughs> so you can imagine the elation when this, this uh, crazy idea of mine of separating the development system from the prototype itself and make it work on all its own worked uh, unexpectedly. So uh, with, I mean, in, in the film, uh, Microman, <laughs> the, P the BBC was actually coming up the stairs. That's a traumatization of what actually happened. I think we were ready about half an hour or an hour before they arrived. <laughs> had to port um, the ACORN system, operating system, to the board very, very quickly, which basically meant cutting out all the devices that didn't yet exist, um, and get a, a, some BBC Basic in there. Um, and then uh, the 6845 CRT controller that runs the video on a BBC Micro that wasn't a supported peripheral with the ACORN system operating system. So then typing blind using an ACORN system range keyboard, which the operating system did understand, um, I had to tell BBC Basic how to set up the CRT controller, which I did. And I got um, a, a BBC machine mode zero display, black and white pixels um, up just uh, as the BBC were coming up the stairs to see the prototype. So they'd arrived at 10 o'clock. I wasn't ready. Herman and Chris had uh, delayed them in, in uh, Herman's office. And when they could delay them no more, they came upstairs and there was a BBC micro running, BBC micro prototype, I should say, running with a mode display and a little random walk on the, on the display. Um, it turns out after the event that the BBC knew we didn't have a prototype, um, where Chris had assured them that they could come and see the prototype, they knew there wasn't one. Um, so they were as astonished as anybody else to see it working. We thought the challenge to build the thing in a week was silly. Um, uh, so we, we were never really particularly convinced we'd get there. Um, so I think everybody was surprised uh, when the thing uh, turned out to work just at the last minute. I think they've been working with a different company for quite a long time and, and got a bit frustrated by the rate at which things seemed to happen um, before they opened up. Uh, the, the BBC Micro contract to uh, a number of additional bidders. Um, so I suspect the mere fact that we got something up and running in, in under a week um, was a significant factor in convincing them that, that Acorn 
could do things. Of course, Acorn had the Atom products already out in sale for a couple of years before then. So clearly the company could make products. Um, and in addition to developing the prototype in that week, um, Herman and Chris also got Alan Boothroyd to produce a mock-up of the case. So when the BBC came on, on the Friday, um, they, they on the one side they got, this is what it'll work like, and on the other side they got, and this is what it'll look like. Um, and I think pulling all that together in a week um, was, was reasonably compelling. 